Okay, I'm just shooting over to um, to a, a mob of fresh carved cows. I've got a sick cow in there. She's suffering from um, a, a metabolic disorder, a condition uh, we call milk fever in New Zealand. Um, probably it's more correctly termed hypercalcemia. So it's a, it's a calcium metabolism disorder. Um, it's probably not really a calcium deficiency, but I'll explain a bit more in a moment. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> as you're probably aware, bones are really dense in calcium. So um, that's kind of been a marketing uh, a marketing point for milk for generations is that uh, milk helps build, build bones. But milk actually has a secondary function in the body, well it's actually a primary function in the body, other than um, maintaining bone density. Is, and I like to think of it, it's like the on-off switch for a muscle. So inside a, inside a muscle cell, there's this uh, body called the sarcoplasmic reticulum and it's filled with um, it's filled with calcium and when the muscle is stimulated by a nerve um, it basically releases all that calcium that changes the configuration of a couple of proteins um, actin and myosin and uh, and the muscle contracts as a result and now so what can can happen with cows is at or around calving so you know a few days before to a couple of weeks afterwards um, Cows have two things that happen. So first of all, the the need for calcium skyrockets because they start producing milk in you know in large quantities, and milk's very calcium dense. And the amount of calcium coming into their body tends to drop off quite precipitously because they generally don't eat as much. You know they um, you know they're having contractions, so they've got some off their feed. Uh, they've just had a calf that puts them off their feed. You know um, so in that sort of window around calving, we have this dramatic shift in the balance so the requirement for calcium goes right up and the and the supply goes right down. Now um, ordinarily cows have a ready store of calcium on hand all the time. They've, they've got their bones right so um, you know in a normal healthy cow everything going well what will happen is the cow will metabolize um, calcium from her bones and she'll lose a little bit of bone density in that period and then um, what will happen is her her dietary intake of calcium will go back up again and, and she'll replace that and she'll be ready again for next year. But there are some cows where that doesn't quite work so um, for whatever reason I don't understand the chemistry behind it but cows that have been grazing on pasture that's high in potassium um, often don't manage to do that for, for whatever reason, not really sure why. Um, particularly fat cows and particularly thin cows they have a hard time and older cows and cows with higher milk production because obviously the, the shift is much greater for them. Um, so that said it's a reasonably unusual thing for me to see in beef cows because beef cows lower milk production get up girl come on come on come on come on. Um, beef cows have have typically lower milk production so they're pretty pretty relaxed in that regard and the other thing is beef cows tend to eat lower quality pasture and lower quality pasture takes longer to digest so they tend to absorb more of the calcium as it goes through and if they stop eating for a few hours their gut is still full and they continue to absorb more calcium so um, so it's relatively low incidence in beef cows but because I have um, some dairy beef genetics here you know I've got a lot of cows that are a quarter or half Frisian those cows have higher milk production and some of the older ones are at risk of this. Um, so typically in, a, in any given year um, I might see one or two cases. So anyway I'll go down and I'll show you this cow. She's back on her feet and I've given her a treatment already um, but I'm just keeping an eye on her and I'll come back again later in the day because often with the treatments they'll get up and then go back down again. So let's go have a look. And now as I said um, calcium's that on off switch for the muscle so sort of the first diagnostic I use when I'm looking, looking at a cow and I'm trying to work out if it's milk fever is I'm looking at muscle tone. Um, so when a cow, she goes down, she can't get up, there could be a variety of reasons. So it might be the muscle doesn't work um, or it might be that her brain doesn't work, right? So um, what I'm looking for is trying to work that out. Is it a, is it a muscle issue or is it a brain issue? So if a, if a cow's lying down and she's been quite inactive, um, then that's a, that's a sign that the muscles themselves aren't working. Um, if she's been lying down but she's been you know, kicking and thrashing and trying to get up, then that's a sign that it's, it's, it's at the brain level because the muscles are working but maybe the control's not, not quite there. So anyway, I'll turn the camera around and we'll have a look. Yeah, I don't want to get too close to her because she's, um, 
she's a little bit stirred up uh, and she's actually not looking too bad now but you see the cow that's got the calf the black cow with the calf right behind her if you look at her she's sort of a little bit down at the head um, she's actually looking a lot better already she got up about 10 minutes ago and so she's just starting to work a bit of the stiffness out of the muscles um, but if you look at her tail the tail's very limp um, when she was down she has what they, they call a swan neck or an s bend in the neck so it's a, it's a really characteristic um, it's a characteristic you know lack of muscle tone they can't support their head particularly well now that lack of muscle tone can create a few other issues so um, cows can become uh, constipated because their you know their bowels aren't moving because of lack of muscle tone um, they can be prone to uh, mastitis and that's sort of a twofold thing because they're lying down in the mud often um, and then the other thing is that, that the, you know, the, um, the little annular muscles that hold the hold the teeth cow closed um, they tend to they lose muscle tone as well so you get milk leaking out and potentially bacteria coming back in again but I'm pretty pretty happy about this cow um, I think she's going to be up she's looking reasonably alert so I treated her maybe half an hour 45 minutes ago and, uh, the way we do that I'll show you in a second but the way we do that is we use a, um, a bag of metabolic solution which goes in under the skin so it's, a, it's just a big it's like a half a litre again we'll use product like this um, now this can be treated uh, subcutaneously, so under the skin, and we typically do it uh, on the neck or over the ribs. And you know, it's a half a litre injection, um, and so we'll give them the whole bag and then massage it in as much as we can. Sometimes I'll, I'll spread it out over two or three different sites to try and aid absorption uh, and, and really rub it in. And then um, the other thing we can do is we can give this stuff uh, intravenously so there's a vein in the neck I, I prefer to use the milk vein because I'm not very expert at it um, so the milk vein is a huge big vein that drains milk back from the udder and we, we treat them there um, so I tend to use the milk vein because it's easier access whereas the neck vein um, is probably more sterile I think is the, is the logic behind using it so and calcium is pretty pretty straightforward so long as you move it, use it reasonably slowly and um, uh, you know, you don't pump it in at a million miles an hour, you can put it intra intravenously reasonably safely. Um, if you've got a complicated case and you need to treat with magnesium, um, I believe the vets advise against putting magnesium into a vein unless you're, you know, a vet. Um, so I never, I never do it. I'll put uh, magnesium under the skin. Uh, pretty straightforward, there's no real risk there. Um, but I'll, I'll avoid putting magnesium into a vein. Um, just because you have to manage it very carefully because if you get the concentration too high apparently it can cause a, it cause a heart attack um, yeah so that's our that's our treatment route now that cow um, when I came this morning to see her uh, she was down but could rise on her own if I made a lot of noise and really scared her um, and I do like to get them up on their feet as soon as possible so even though it's a bit stressful on the cow the faster we can get them on their feet the better so I got her up and she did walk around a little bit but she went down again so I knew she wasn't gonna um, you know she wasn't gonna self correct so I went and grabbed a bag off the ute and gave I've given her one bag under the skin um, but she looked a little bit magnesium y to me um, a little bit like she was short on magnesium so I wanted to I wanted to get a different type of bag to also put under the skin uh, but now she's up and she's walking and grazing on her own um, I've decided I'll leave her, but I will come back again uh, later in the day. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll come back in three or four hours and, uh, and maybe give her another bag if she's still looking crock. So if you see the um, that little belt of Galloway calf sort of bang in the middle of the screen there, the cow behind her, uh, behind him, sorry, uh, that black cow that's feeding a calf, suckling a calf, that's our, that's our crook cow. Now I'm just sort of watching from a distance, she's watching me. A um, few things that are really making me feel quite positive, she's, she's grazing again, right? Really like to see a, a down cow grazing again. Uh, she's suckling her calf. Um, she's walking, you know, she's interacting with other cows. She's got her head up, she can control her ears, all those sorts of things. So she's actually looking pretty good. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident. Um, Untreated milk fever will kill a cow because it's sort of a, um, a you know self-fulfilling prophecy. They 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 
they don't have enough calcium to run their muscles so they can't get up and go eat and get more calcium and then eventually the lack of calcium affects all their muscles in their body and they can no longer breathe and their heart doesn't beat and that sort of stuff and they um they get a little bit dead so uh so it's a serious issue but equally it's actually a relatively straightforward thing to to treat um and quite cheap and can be can be treated quite quickly so um i will still have to keep an eye on her for the next couple of days um because of the like i said the issue with mastitis and uh grass daggers and various other ailments that can um can treat them but you know she's looking pretty good it's uh 24 hours later and i'm just back to check this cow i can see she's up she's down the far end of the paddock but i can see she's up and about so that's excellent um now I just uh, just had to carve a cow, which is a bit of a shame because I was hoping to get a have a clean sheep the whole way through calving. But one heifer so far, it's not too bad. She was having quite a big a big uh, bull calf, um, so you can almost guarantee if you have to pull a calf, it'll be a it'll be a bull, but not quite not quite a guarantee. She's just running away from me down the back of the paddock there, but yeah, no, she's happy as there. She's walking perfectly fine. She's looking nice and alert. She's feeding a calf. Everything's good. Uh, everything else looks pretty happy too. Now, away over in the distance there towards the bluffs is where the heifers are, and the one that I just carved. Now, uh, the heifer's fine, no, no problem with her at all, but I'm not 100% sure about the calf. Unfortunately, the calf's got a lot of swelling around its face and throat, um, just from being hung up for a while, and um, he's having a hard time breathing, so he took a while to get going once I pulled him out so I, um, I improvised some CPR or you know uh, breathe, breathe for him for a couple of minutes until he kicked in on his own um, but I don't know he's just he's still pretty sporadic so I'm not uh, I'm not 100% confident 